How does yours stay lit? Just I don't keep puffing on it. I told you I don't. Got to get better at this. I'm you're, not a big. You're I a toxic you. masculinity guy. You have to do toxic and masculinity things. Not a huge cigar guy. No. No. Like I, I mean, I do like them, but I don't smoke them a lot. I kind of quit when I started my paper route. We had a uh, cigar company called Honeys, something Honeys. So it used to be a paper route. I delivered it, and it was like our first advertiser. I'd smoke them when I drove the Astro van. I got so high, and I was just done with them. When was this? Uh, 2004. You had a paper route in 2004? Barstool started as a newspaper. So I used to like hand it out, and we had those little news racks outside subway stations. For 48 hours, I'd just jump in my Astro van and fill the news racks, drop them in bars throughout Boston. Really? Yeah, that's how it started. That's how you started? Yeah, it was a newspaper. Wow. Yeah. So would, your own newspaper. Yeah. Wow. I'd wake up like 4 a.m., go to the subway, hand it out to people, like walking by me, just scream at them, like take the newspaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the motivation to do that? Like, so how did you get the idea? I was always into gambling. And I so I had a normal sales job. I always knew I wanted to try my own thing. Flew out to Vegas, met with like the casinos. They're all like, you got to be a dealer. You got to start at the bottom. I was like, I don't want to do that. Talked to offshore casinos and said, how do I get involved? And they all said, at the, the internet at the time I did this, if you went to a gambling site, fireworks, pop-ups, look like you're getting your credit card stolen. They actually said, get us off the internet, put us in a physical newsletter, and we'll advertise. So I sold like a year of advertising before we launched, and it was a gambling rag. It was like a four-page newspaper, but I sold the advertising, and it allowed me just to morph. So, like, during the course of the year, we slowly moved strictly away from gambling to more, like, men's interests, like girls and things like that. That's how it started. Wow. So, when you were into gambling, like, why did you decide to do a newspaper? Because I knew I wanted to do something I enjoyed doing. I was doing cold calling sales. I couldn't do that my whole life. And when I called these casinos to advertise, it's what I just said. The internet was cluttered. It was filled. It was a time when if you, it, it literally every gambling website had little graphics of fireworks popping up, everything, and the gambling companies wanted to get off the internet because it was too cluttered. So they, they said, if you do a newsletter or a newspaper, we'll advertise. So that's why I created it. How funny is that? They wanted to get off the off internet. Off the internet. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Barstool Sports. Oh, my God. Look at that. 2003, the first issue of Barstool Sports. Yeah. Wow. Hooters football. First advertisers. Yeah. Hooters. <laughs> Hooters was your first. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hooters is apparently in trouble. I just read something about Hooters is the, not doing That's well. the fake story? Is that a fake story? I don't know. The one that the, that people aren't interested in tits anymore? Yeah. Well, that's a fake story. <laughs> I don't know if that's, that's the one. That's not true. I think that that is that's a ridiculous conclusion. Like, just because a business that has girls, you know, with uh, owl eyes over their tits i don't know how they get away with it i've always wondered that in this like culture basically where, where you can just hire on looks yeah that is true right but th don't they do that in strip clubs too yeah i mean they kind of do <laughs> yeah but i don't know how like yeah there's no equality in strip clubs no, like some that, are better like, than others, but yeah, it's based on looks. Yeah, all that body positivity shit. That out doesn't... the window. So how do you figure out, like, how do they get away with it? How does a restaurant get away with it? It's a good question, but it's the same thing in, like, those Chippendale shows. Absolutely. It's, yeah, I mean, that's what you're selling. If that's what you're selling. You get away with it. Yeah. That must be the case. It is the case. It got, I mean, but it's not with models anymore. Like, now you can be an obese well, that, model. Yes. But that's also because you're selling clothes to people that are obese. Because well, there's a lot of people that are overweight. You can sell correct. them clothes. and I guess it's good to have an overweight model because if you're an overweight person, you buy clothes, like, oh, that would look good on me. It looks good on her. Yeah, it's half it's half public pressure and half business because, it, like, Victoria's Secret got basically bullied out of their fashion show and their entire model by only having, like, mo uh, like the perfect Victoria's Secret angels. They had to go plus size. Now... They did that because of public pressure or because of business decision or kind of both. You know, where they stuck to their guns if they're like, our business is killing it. We don't care what you say. I don't know. I wonder. I bet it enhanced their business to have well, size. Correct. So a good, good business move. Are they doing it right? Are they doing it? I'm one of those guys. I don't think there's any, uh, I forget the word that I'm going to say, um, altruism. I don't think there's an altruistic act in the world. 
I think every single thing somebody does is, even if it just makes you feel good, well, that's not altruistic. Right. Yeah, I've said that before about being kind and generous, that it makes you feel good. It's actually good for you, too. Correct. But it's still kind and generous. It's like, just because, like, someone enjoys it doesn't mean it's not altruistic. It's just that there is a benefit to the person that does it, too. The, I, I think a lot of people have this idea of altruism that you only, uh, you're only benefiting the person you're helping. And that's the only real altruism. But I think it's – you're also – yeah, I mean, it, it benefits you. But it benefits you and it just – it feels good. 